Hey guys, it's Chuck, uh, Outside Screwball. Uh, welcome back to my shop. Um, tonight, I'm um, going to do a little project, but I want to talk about a subject. And I'm going to move the camera, but the subject is split cotter, or split cotters, or cotters. Um, it's a subject that's uh, had my, my interest for some time. Um, I had actually started... Uh, started a project some time ago uh, that involved using split cotters. Uh, I found some information on the web and uh, I started uh, following the, the designs. Come to find out that the designs were no good and wrote the fella and he said, oh, I just put them up there for show. Um, they're not intended to be good. So it kind of, it was kind of just made and I stopped. And since then I've, I've looked, uh, I've looked in online and, and been interested in trying to build them and how they're designed. Uh, I just figured that why do I have to figure it out when I'm just a hobby machinist and all these years of machining are ahead of me uh, by people. As somebody must know. Um, I did, I did a, uh, a web search recently and printed out some articles um, that show some things um, and there's just very limited and maybe you guys can help me maybe you know a source that there is much more information on it um, I thought okay let's uh, let's refer to the machinery's handbook and and sure enough in the index it said cotters so I looked up cotters and the definition of a cotter the cotter is a form of key that is used to connect rods etc that are subject to either tension or compression or both. The cotter being subjected to shearing stretches at two transverse cross sections. And it talks about taper co cotters and it also talks about if a screw is used. Um, so I thought, okay, turn the page and geez, I've, there's gotta be dimensions and stuff. No, that's it. That's it for cotters, doesn't tell you anything. So um, I'm gonna move the camera and uh, I'll show you at least what I learned off of one web page, uh, and we'll start the discussion there. Now you're going to have to pardon my drawing ability, uh, but uh, the subject, I guess, is split cotter. And so if you can imagine we've got a block, and the, there's going to be a one-inch bore in the block. And in that bore, there's going to be a shaft that's going to go through that bore. And you want to lock the shaft in the bore. Well, this, this is the cotter. And this is a split cotter since it's, it's split in two. And so what you have is the top cotter has a clearance hole for a bolt to go down through. And the bottom cotter is threaded so that when the two pull together, they will catch on the shaft and lock the shaft in place. So in this web page that I did find, the discussion was if it was a one inch bore, uh, typically they were using a 0 .590 cotter. Um, uh, and I don't know how they came up that it had to be a 0 .590. Um, and then they gave a offset center line of cotter to center line of bore was your offset for Inst installation of the cotter. Um, the cotter installation itself is relatively simple. You, you, you build your cotter first uh, and then you install your cotter in the block. Then you bore your hole and as you bore your hole you're going to shape the cotter. Um, so in reality it's, it's relatively simple. Um, a lot of the cotters when, where's my sample? A lot of them, when, when they build cotters, they build it with a, a lip on the one side so that when the, the bolt is pulling, it can't pull the cotter through. I don't know if I'm in frame there or not. But, and, then, and then when after the cotter is actually built and formed, then you would either machine off or grind off that end and so that the, the cotter wouldn't be seen. Um, uh, so let me, let me stop here and I'm going to grab uh, something. Well, I just wanted to show you this. This is something I built some time ago. And 
this was not done with a cotter. This was done where the piece of material is, is split and then there's a clearance hole on the top for the bolt through the part and then it's threaded on the bottom and that's what collapses and creates a smaller bore for friction uh, on the part. Um, it's one method of doing it. I think the cotter is, is much cleaner and it's a much stronger, uh, tighter application. So that's been my goal is to build something with a split cotter. Um, this project uh, that I was doing uh, trashed it and uh, actually what I was building was uh, stops for my mill vise and uh, I ended up uh, doing a different design that I saw on the web and, and copied uh, from Edge Technologies. Um, but there's, there's another there's another cotter that I'll show you that you guys have all seen and maybe not even paid attention to it. And I didn't really pay attention to it much till I was getting going tonight. So hang on. Well, here's your standard uh, quick change tool hole tool holder uh, for a boring bar. And maybe you guys have paid attention or not, but basically inside these units is a uh, split cotter. And the way that these are done is that the uh, it doesn't require a top piece there's a shoulder in there that the bolt sits on and then it pulls up on the cotter and locks on the boring bar shaft so that's uh, basically what uh, I'm going to be showing tonight I'm going to do this type of project um, so let me uh, get uh, things turned around here and uh, we'll continue on in the discussion if you guys have some feedback on cotters, I'd really like to uh, hear about it. Well, guys, uh, Chewy has asked me to uh, build him a holder for this uh, air grinder that he uh, had purchased. And uh, my plan is, is to basically replicate an AXA block, but I'm not going to use the dovetail. I'm going to go ahead and make it so it'll set up in an actual AXA uh, tool holder um, so there'll be a there'll be a a, a uh, mail sticking out right here to create it but I'm gonna copy the um, boring bar setup that the uh, Loris tool holder uses with the uh, with the uh, split collets split cotters split collets split cotters yeah anyway that's my plan so I dug around um, and I found this one block of aluminum that I've uh, used for a setup in the past. So uh, going to go ahead and uh, rough out the piece out of here. Okay, so I'll get it marked up and some carving on it. And okay, we'll do a little cutting here on the uh, on the bandsaw to get the block roughed out. You know, one of the uh, questions that was asked when using this guide, does the, does the block want to pinch? Well, a bandsaw is a little different than a table saw. A table saw, it's going to pinch and throw the, throw the part. The bandsaw is not doing that. The blade is going straight down. So it pinches a little bit, but it doesn't pinch anything like a table saw. So you can do that kind of push through. Okay, we'll take it over, uh, see, make another little slice on it, and then uh, get it over in the mill and start squaring it up. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, learning on the guide where the where the part actually kind of rocked back since it's only a uh, what is it three-eighths of an inch so backing block made it work good so I haven't used it much and it was a good little learning lesson there all right off to the mill a little warm in the shop uh, so I got a fan running plus the uh, 
phase generator, uh, but decided to use the fly cutter to uh, go ahead and get this block cleaned up. Well, to bring you up to speed, uh, the block's been squared and uh, the two, oops, I mean to kick the camera, the two holes here have been uh, drilled through. I'm just going to do the counter bores on them now and then uh, we'll go back in from the bottom and complete the secondary bore uh, for the cotter. Uh, so this has to go a depth of uh, 281 thousandths. Well guys, a little bit of a boot there. So you notice I've got a new hole in it. That's because I goofed up. I was going too fast and I was thinking of this block. And so basically there's the hole centering up on that block. But that block is too big. That block is too big for the grinder. So the grinder is going to have to sit in between those two guys. So I laid it out and I'll just whack this off right there. And so the holes will stay on center. And then I can just turn it over and keep going. Okay. Hey guys, well, fix that boo-boo. So uh, ready to turn over now and do the back side and then we'll go for the bore. Okay guys, well, time for my disclaimer. I was working on this last night and I was uh, really trying to get it done and started really booking and just didn't turn the camera on anymore. Um, so where we left off, I had drilled the holes for the cotters, for the bolts, and I had done a countersunk. Well, then I turned it over and I drilled a half inch diameter hole to accept the cotters. Then I assembled the cotters, right? So I, well, I, well excuse me, I went over to the, uh, hang on. Since I, to make it quick, since I had made a half inch hole for the cotters, it was very simple just to take a half inch bolt and use the stem to create the cotters. Uh, so, uh, machine those 
and then assembled it. And what you have uh, is the cotters, of course, without the board hole, you wouldn't see them. They're, they're back in the piece. Then I uh, took a three quarter inch end mill and went down. And as you can, I think maybe you can see in here, uh, but uh, there's the cotter. And so as the end mill went down, the end mill machined the cotter and fitted the cotter. Then I pulled the cotters out and I took about 20 thousandths off of the cotter uh, at the top part so that, of course, when, it, that when the cotter pulls up, that it would close and, and uh, create an uh, interference between the tool and the uh, cotters. So anyway, the, uh, uh, it, uh, well, look at this, no, I just did it, there it goes. Uh, so it slides together real well. And then the uh, cotters tighten down, and it's a nice stout tool. And then I've set this up so that it'll fit in a AXA uh, tool holder. So it was a fun project. Uh, it turned out well, and um, I don't know if you can see the finish on the aluminum. Uh, but uh, it's a little trick Chewy taught me. Uh, a lot of times I go ahead and glass bead um, the aluminum, but a little trick he taught me is if, if you can imagine this piece of uh, blue tape paper towel is a piece of sandpaper, and you take the sand, take the block set on the sandpaper, and go at a 45 across, and you continue to rotate your part and do that. And it puts a nice uh, satin finish on it a nice nice grain to the aluminum and then what i do after that is i have some uh, uh deft is the product uh, and satin it's a satin lacquer and i just shoot it with the satin lacquer and it gives it a really nice uh, feel to the hand plus it uh it doesn't fingerprint or, or grease and things i imagine grease would attack the satin finish at some point but initially it works out well so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go out and build some cotters. If you guys got information on cotters, share it with me. Um, I'd really like to uh, learn more about how to lay it, lay a cotter out correctly. Um, you know, you don't, of course, you don't want the the through bore to hit your bolts. Um, I mean, so that gives you some information on how to lay it out. Um, of course, I cheated, and uh, I just copied. Uh, copied the, what the, they did here in some regard. So it was a little bit quicker to, to figure it out. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. And uh, uh, just in closing here, um, I really uh, just want to appreciate everybody subscribing. Uh, and enjoy, I hope you're enjoying my channel. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for uh, supporting uh, Randy Richard. I asked you that on a shorty and I uh, thought it was real great. A lot of nice comments you guys uh, went over there and uh, Randy does some really cool things. Uh, really happy I met him on through YouTube here and uh, we've become friends. And then uh, I'm also uh, really uh, blown away by the comments and the response on the uh, the Rose Lathe. Uh, I hope we can get back up to Dale, not hope, we are. We're going to go back to Dale's and uh, we're going to have a couple videos there because uh, there's so much, so many things that he's done. In, in addition to tooling that uh, that I need to film and show for my own education and to share it with you guys. All right, again, thanks a lot and catch you guys on the next one.